This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. My guest today on Sports Files is Memphis Tigers guard Michael Dixon Jr. In a day and age when four-year players are more the exception than the rule, the University of Memphis wrapped up last season hearing the good news that stars Joe Jackson, Jaron Johnson, and Chris Crawford would all be returning for their senior season with the Tigers. The dynamic trio would undoubtedly be one of the top backcourts in the entire country. Then Josh Pastner and his squad received an unexpected gift from the basketball gods as former Missouri basketball star Michael Dixon Jr., who was completely out of basketball a season ago, decided he would transfer to Memphis. Of course, that decision didn't come easy. First, Pastner had to make sure Dixon, who was accused of sexual assault on two separate occasions while at Mizzou, was ready to walk the straight and narrow and rededicate himself to academics and basketball. Pastner also had to get the green light from his superiors, who made sure the move was the right one. What certainly helped Dixon was the fact the Tigers stepped up last year and took a chance with Jaron Johnson, who has turned past indiscretions into a new lease on life in Memphis, where he's becoming model citizen and a fan favorite. The final obstacle for Dixon and the Tigers was for the NCAA to grant a waiver to play immediately. With precedent already being set, most in the know felt it a mere formality. But as they say, the waiting is the hardest part. And finally, on September 4th, the NCAA made it official. So now Dixon joins Jackson, Johnson, and Crawford, giving the Tigers four senior guards who could all start at most top-level programs. Today, Michael Dixon Jr. opens up on his past, present, and future, next on Sports Files. Michael, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Glad we appreciate it. A couple of weeks ago, you finally get the news you were waiting for from the NCAA that you would be able to play this year for the Tigers. What was it like when you heard the news? Man, it was awesome, man. I mean, just just being able to know that I'm going to be here and be able to get my degree as well as represent, you know what I mean, the University of Memphis on the basketball floor and compete for another year was, you know what I mean, everything that me as well as my family wanted to hear, so. A lot of people said that they believed it was a, a mere formality, that there was no doubt you were going to get the green light, but you still worry when you don't hear anything, right? Yeah, I worry, but at the same time, I tried not to think about it because, you know what I mean, I'm, I'm a team guy. I don't want, you know what I mean, things to be solely about me. So I tried to just go through every day worrying about class and worrying about helping my teammates on the basketball floor and worrying about this team getting better for, you know what I mean, when I was here. What was it like for you? last year sitting out not knowing what was going to happen in your future um it, it was different you know what i mean but I, I had a lot of time to think and you know what i mean reevaluate everything and i mean i just didn't really know what was going to happen and then you know what i mean one day coach passion called me and said that he he wanted to give me an opportunity you know what i mean to you know what i mean give me a last year of college and help me finish my degree and you know what i mean play basketball, which is the one thing in my, you know what I mean, in my life right. outside of family and God that I love to, you know what I mean, that I love. And I mean, I just, you know what I mean, I try to thank him as much as possible still for, for this opportunity. Before Josh reached out yeah. to you and you were still un unsure what was going to happen, who were you leaning on? Um, I had talked to Scott Drew <clears throat> at Baylor and uh, a couple of other schools, but it wasn't, you know what I mean, very many you know what I mean, people and a lot of people, a lot of coaches and people were, you know what I mean, iffy on if they could get right. you into school right. or anything just because. But, but, of, for, but for guidance, were you leaning on your family as you were trying to figure out what was going on? Who was that that you would talk to? And, and um, I talk to my father every day. Mm -hmm. And he's probably, he's easily the most influential person in my life. Talk to my mom too. And I have a brother and sister at home and I'm the oldest. So. You know what I mean? We stayed together and we prayed, you know what I mean? And we just, you know what I mean, tried to 
tried to do everything we could to put me in a position to be able to get somewhere. And uh, I tried to stay in shape as much as possible. And it was really hard, actually, being on your own, you know what I mean, not knowing what's going to happen right. and not knowing, you know what I mean, where I'm going to be at come fall because I want to be in school. So. so Josh reaches out. Uh, you decide yes to Memphis. Of course, Memphis has to go through what they went through to figure out if it was the right move to bring you in, mm -hmm. and it all worked out. But why, why Memphis? In the end, why did you decide on the University um, of Memphis? You know what I mean? I saw a roster that was filled with senior, senior experienced guards as well as a high recruiting class coming in. So, I mean, I mean I'm a basketball junkie. You know, I, I live and breathe this stuff. So I just saw uh, some experienced guys and some freshmen that could play, and I just felt like I could be a part of it. And, Memphis is an elite college basketball program. They've been on the map for, you know what I mean, many a years. Right. Everybody saw Derrick Rose play here, Tyreek Evans, you know what I mean? It was just a place where I just felt like I could be at and that I was, you know what I mean? Yeah, you would, think, you would think, though, that some players would look at that roster and see the, as you said, a senior laden backward, which is what you will be, a senior and a backward player, and go somewhere else because they don't want to face the competition. But you like the competition. Yeah, I love it. I mean, nothing has ever been handed to me in college. In Missouri, we had, uh, you know what I mean, an abundance of really good players. And I just, I want to I wanna win a national championship. I want to go to a Final Four. And I just saw a roster that could be able to do that. And a lot of guys could, you know what I mean, take an easy route and say, I want to go somewhere where, you know what I mean, I don't have to come out or right. I can play 30 minutes a game. I'm, I'm about winning, and I'm a team player, and <clears throat> I love winning. So I wanted to be somewhere where we could potentially, you know what I mean, get to Dallas in April because April is where you play, where, you, where the real, you know what I mean, Absolutely. teams play. What are the expectations from your coach? And I'm not talking about on the court. Um, I mean, you know what I mean, just being a model citizen every day and, you know what I mean, doing the right things, going to class, you know what I mean, eating right, you know what I mean, being cordial with people and, you know what I mean, greeting everyone that I meet. I've met a lot of good people here, and this is a, this is definitely a great basketball town. And uh, I mean, I feel at home and I feel welcomed, and I just, I'm just so relieved and happy to be able to right. know that I'm going to be playing another season, man. It's awesome. You come from a very established basketball program in Missouri, and now you go to another one in Memphis, but it's hard – before you've experienced to really understand how much they worship the round ball here in this city. Yeah, it's crazy. How quickly did you figure out, boy, they're, they're rabbit basketball um, fans? Well, I played in the Bluff City Classic. Right. You know what I mean? This past summer, I've been here since June uh, alongside Nick King. And, I mean, just the, you know what I mean, the turnout for the people that were at that, just to watch, just to watch a whole bunch of, you know what I mean, pros and amateurs play basketball was just Mind-blowing, because, I mean, we don't really have anything like that in Kansas City, where I'm from. And all the Memphis Tigers fans would show up and just, you know what I mean, say that they're glad I'm here. They embraced you right away. Yeah, and hope everything works out. And, I mean, that was just, you know what I mean, amazing to me. These people don't know me from, you know what I mean, anything. Mm -hmm. So I was just happy. And we won. Me and Nick, me and Nick King's you team did. won the Bluff City Classic. So it was, it was a great experience. Michael, are you strictly a point, or do you play the two as well? Um, I'm a combo guard. You know what I mean? I can play off the ball and on the ball. Um, I know how to play both positions. And, you know what I mean, I don't really need the ball to score. So, right. you know what I mean, whatever Coach Pastor needs me to do for this team to be successful, I'm willing to do because, like I said again, I, I want to win. You know what I mean? I want to I wanna win a national championship. And this team does not have a ceiling, I don't think. You know what I mean? We got a long way to go, and we're not where we should be. But, I mean, it's – September. So, I mean, I think that when we get into a routine and get going, I think we could be a really good team. People look at that roster and they agree with you that this team, this, the sky's the limit. But they also bring up the question, there's only one rock. Yeah. And you're talking about four senior guards, all these terrific young players that are coming in. <clears throat> and right now the chemistry is great with all you guys. But what happens when there's a game that somebody gets 12 minutes instead of 25? Do you feel that they're that you're all on the same page? Um, I think that, you know what I mean, it's my job as a senior and as a player on this team to, you know what I mean, lead and explain to 
the younger guys and whoever that it's about sacrifice. Right. I mean, we got, you know what I mean, 1 to 15, we got really good players on this team. And everybody's not going to play the minutes that they want to, but if you sacrifice for the betterment of the team, then, you know what I mean, everybody benefits. And I just think that that's something that me and Joe and Chris and Jaron and David, all being seniors, are going to stress to, you know what I mean, everybody under us. And I think that, you know what I mean, if it's my job to lead, I'm so happy to be here. I, I, I want to do anything to help this team. And, you know what I mean, I think, that, I think that we should be fine. Give me a word or a couple of words, a sentence, on the three backcourt mates of you of yours. And I'm, I'm not going to bring up the freshmen. And, you know, obviously a lot of these guys are going to be in the mix. But Jaron Johnson, give me a sentence or, or a few words on him. Animal. I mean, he is an absolute, you know what I mean, uh, monster on the floor. <laughs> I mean, he, you know what I mean, he just stays after you. And he's so he's intense. relentless. Yeah, he doesn't take any plays off. Okay. Chris Crawford. Um, amazing shooter. Probably one of the best shooters in the country. And uh, he's six five. He's six, he's really six five, and you know what I mean. Can can do a lot of other things, and he's not just a shooter. He he. Uh, I saw last year. I watched a lot of tape that he does a lot of ball handling duty. So I mean, it helps when it's a lot of ball handlers on the floor, and you don't have to have you don't have to get the ball into one guy's hand. So he okay. can do a lot. Joe Jackson. Um, I mean, he's probably he's easily probably the fastest and quickest player that I've ever played against. And I played alongside Phil Pressey in Missouri, who's right. with the Boston Celtics mm-hmm. now. So, I mean, he, you know I mean? He's a tremendous player and it's just a lot of good players on this team, like I said. And I mean, I think that we're only going to go as far as, you know what I mean? That, you know what I mean? Joe's been here a while and, you know what I mean? This he's, is where he's, he's from. He's the, a leader. He's the guy. Yeah. Yes. So. Last year, obviously, you weren't on, the, on this team, but you probably saw the game in the NCAA tournament after Memphis won their first game. They, they ran into a big, physical Michigan State team. Yeah. The other question that people are asking, beside whether or not there's enough balls to go around for all these terrific guards, do you have enough up front to, get, to go up against and beat a mm-hmm. big, physical, strong team like Michigan State? I think that we do. I mean, Austin Nichols and uh, Dominique Wilson, people are going to be surprised about those are freshmen. Shaq Goodwin's been through, you know what I mean, a season. He's a great player. And David Pelham is experienced. Right. So I think that, you know what I mean, again, it's just our job to bring Dom and Austin along as well as, you know what I mean, David and Shaq. It's their job too. I mean, those guys are all, you know what I mean, gifted and talented. And I think that it's just, you know what I mean, it's not going to be one guy. It's not going right. to be three guys. It's going to be a collective unit. So. I just think that, like I said, again, we're a work in progress, but we got, we got some guys that can get the job done. What are your goals? Um, my goal is, you know what I mean, to first of all, to graduate. Because right. that's, that's why we're here with student athletes. Um, secondly, you know what I mean, just, you know what I mean, I think, I think I can have a solid year, you know what I mean, helping this team. Because like I said, there's not going to be anybody on this team that, you know what I mean, scores 20 points a game or – plays 30 minutes, 35 minutes a game. It's just, it's just not how this team is. And, I mean, I sit back and evaluate from a person looking in instead of, you know what I mean, being just a player thinking about myself. I just want to win, man. That's all, that's all that I'm really worried about. Short term, sh- short term, you're a team player. It's been mm-hmm. established. You want to win. But long term, you want to play professionally. Exactly. Yeah, I want to play in the As NBA. As mostly everybody yeah, on that team does, right? Team. I want to play in the NBA. And – I don't, and I've stressed that there's no way we can do that if if we lose, you know what I mean, the first round of the, you know what I mean, right. NCAA tournament. Right. If we have an early exit, people have to be seen, and the only way we can be seen is if we work together. Nobody, nobody, yeah, nobody's gonna be able to get to the NBA by themselves. I'm sorry. No problem. Yeah. Give me a sentence on your head coach, Josh Pastner. Um, tremendous person. You know what I mean? Great leader, and I mean just a tremendously humble, you know what I mean, human being. Mm-hmm. I mean, I went to Arizona basketball camp when I was, I think, eight years old, actually. And he was there. And he was a player. So wow. I had already been, you know what I mean, a little familiar with Coach Pastner. And, you know what I mean, I knew that he was an up-and-coming, you know what I mean, guy in the coaching tree and things like that. So, I mean, he's just, he's been amazing. Fantastic. Michael, you're not quite off the hot seat because we do something at the end with every one of our interviews, Uh-oh. and it's called Five for the Road. Okay. First thing that comes in your mind for these questions, we start off with your favorite professional sports team. Um, the Oakland Raiders. 
The Raiders. Yeah. <laughs> My dad's from Oakland. So. Okay, there you go. Yeah. There's the connection. Yeah. The black and silver. Favorite professional athlete of all time? Oh, man. Um, Whose poster did you have up in your room? Uh, I would probably have to say Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson. Yeah. Favorite music? What do you like to listen to before a game? Um, rap and hip hop. I like Jay Z. Jay Z. You know what I mean, yeah. Good choice. Mm -hmm. Favorite movie of all time? Uh, Hoop Dreams. Hoop Dreams. Yeah. Who's in that? It's a documentary about Arthur A. G. and. Uh, oh yes, yeah, yes. Um, oh, boy, uh, I saw that. Yeah, it's a good. It is terrific yeah. documentary. Um, and then finally, your favorite television show. When you kick back. You got some time to yourself, and you want to watch a little tube. Family Guy. Family Guy? Hilarious. Who's your favorite character? Uh, I had to say Stewie. <laughs> Can you impersonate any of them? No, nah, I can't. Um, um, I can't do it. Who's the funniest guy <laughs> on the team, by the way? Oh, my goodness. We have so many characters. I don't even know who to say. Uh, probably have to be... Probably surprisingly, Jaron Johnson. You'd be, you'd be amazed. <laughs> That's, that does surprise me. Hey, Michael, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Best of luck. We look forward Appreciate to watching it. you play. Right. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, it's overtime. Scott Robinson never made a basket or blocked a shot for the University of Memphis, but he was indeed an integral part of the basketball program. Robinson started as a manager and later the head graduate manager for the Tigers' great run under former head coach John Calipari. Robinson was able to take what he learned under Cal and turn it into his first coaching job and did so at the age of 27. But that wasn't all. In addition to being men's basketball head coach, Robinson became the first athletic director in the history of Victory University, once known as Crichton College. Now a grizzled vet at 30, Robinson continues to build an athletic program that started from scratch, and he's enjoying everything about it. Well, Scott, thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. What's, what's the biggest challenge for you here at Victory? Well, you know, I don't know if there is a challenge. I've got an opportunity. Um, I've got an opportunity to make the most of what we have here in the city of Memphis. Uh, we're a school that has an athletic program to offer these kids. You know, you're in a city with 1.3 million people, and uh, we have, uh, you know, seven sports to offer and ten teams, and we have a, an opportunity for these kids to come in. And, you know, we're trying to distinguish ourselves amongst the other institutions here that have, uh, you know, athletic programs that have been around for a while. And, you know, you can look at our bowling program that we're the only school in the city of Memphis that has a bowling program. And we're just trying to find ways to distinguish ourselves. So, you know, we have an opportunity. I wouldn't say a challenge. It started out with just basketball and cheer, and you've right. added sports. Right. How high can you go? How many, how many more sports can you bring to victory? And what is the goal? Um, you know, we have options. You know, you can look at it from a... Uh, from a perspective of what type of diversity we're trying to bring here to our school. You know, soccer, men's and women's soccer would probably be the next uh, strategic sport to start. Uh, so, um, you know, you can look at tennis, golf, you know, in Memphis, you know, there's lacrosse. I mean, there's all types of sports. You know, other schools they have bass fishing. I mean, it's it's unbelievable how many sports you can come up with. But, uh, you know, it's uh, judo. You know, uh, there's a, there's a tons of opportunities to be able to bring something here uh, to the university. And it's just trying to figure out what that looks like. You take over victory in the athletic department at the age of 26. You're in your fourth year. You're now a crafty old veteran at the age of 30. What was it like at 26 walking into these doors to run an athletic department? You obviously had to be one of the youngest athletic directors in the entire country. Um, I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't nervous. Um, it was, it, you know, I, I literally would wake up and sweat trying to figure out what all I had to do that day because I was the only one here trying to figure out not only to recruit players to come play for us, but then also figure out, you know, the student athlete handbook, eligibility, association, who we're going to join. So there's multiple dynamics that you're working on and it feels like you never can get ahead, uh, you know, when you start it and you're doing it, you know, solo. But at the same time, you know, it was, I wouldn't take anything back. I was given an opportunity and it was, it was my first real job. So, 
you know, it was like, you got to figure it out or you won't be here. We've got the baseball team working out behind us, fall ball, but your bread and butter is basketball. Not only the AD here at Victory, but also the head coach of the basketball team. What's it been like? It's been awesome. You know, I've, uh, basketball team, we've, uh, we've got a great group of guys, um, you know, trying to hold them accountable more than just basketball. And, uh, you know, when they finish going out and being, uh, you know, and I was just informed going out and being a, a person that can go out and someone that is going to go establish themselves when they're done playing basketball. But, you know, I was just informed from one of our baseball players when he graduates next year, this is a senior year, he's going to get a GA spot at Mississippi State, right. you know, who just made the College World Series. So, you know, when you hear those stories and you're being able to give opportunities, and as coaches we have an opportunity every day to impact someone's life, and uh, we don't take that for granted. You're a small school. Mm -hmm. You play in a Christian conference, right. and yet you have been able – through your contacts to be able to get exhibition games with Auburn and Arkansas and New Mexico. You'll play right. Troy this year, possibly UNLV next year. Right. How do you get that done? Um, networking, you know, um, I would I would love to play down at the FedEx Forum, having no, having worked down there for six years and uh, and having the local kids here and uh, that would be an unbelievable experience and um, you know, but just networking, trying to reach out, trying to uh, you know that helps me recruit. You know, I'm trying to also reach out and hopefully get UCLA next year with Coach Schilling, who actually got me the job at Memphis. That's how I ended up over there. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Ed was great. So he's he's gonna. Uh, you know, hopefully we can get UCLA after you know at playing UNLV next year. So it's just reaching out and trying to figure out, you know, how it's gonna help my team and be able to help recruit and you know just the experience. I would imagine your goals down the road to be. Continue to coach basketball, maybe at the Division One level. Am I wrong about that? Um, if that were to come along, it'd be a unbelievable opportunity. Um, you know, it's every day I look at it from I'm here, I'm blessed to be here, and I want to be able to impact someone's life. You know, um, I started a foundation for MS research for my mom who right. hasn't been able to walk since I can remember. Um, and just you know, whether it be coaching or doing something else, you know, my mind just meanders everywhere and uh, just trying to figure it out and figure it along the way and trying to trying to impact people. You, you talked about Coach Ed Schilling and right. so many other assistant coaches right. that you dealt with during the John Calipari era, at least part of the, the John Calipari era. How does John influence you in every walk of life, whether it be as a coach right. or just a man? Um, you know, that was the first time I actually was in a situation where I was learning from someone in terms of working. You know, I was a, I was a manager, I was a GA, you know, I uh, was held accountable for everything I did. Um, and, you know, I was fortunate to re receive uh, education from that. Uh, but just being around him, I mean, you know, his success is unparalleled. Um, and you'd learn, and when you're around it, I tell my players all the time, you're the average of the five people you hang around. And around that time, it allowed me to have this opportunity and where I'm at now. And, you know, from the basketball standpoint, you know, uh, just being around that and learning every day and, you know, but you also learn that you got to have some good players, and he can do that with his recruiting ability. And he, he just made you feel like a family um, each and every day, and and that was a, a great experience. And we talk, uh, we uh, keep in touch, and you know, I see him out in the summer uh, in July when he's recruiting, and uh, we actually practice at Kentucky on our way to the USCA Nationals that we qualified for up in uh, Uniontown, Pennsylvania. So it was good to catch up with him, and just great experience for my kids. If people come out to see Victory and it's at Street Ministries is where you play your home games, what style of basketball will they see? Will it be similar to what John runs at Kentucky and ran at Memphis? Yeah, uh, you know, I've worked for Coach Passner as well. So, you know, you learn from all different types of uh, people that you're around. So, uh, you know, we play up and down. We play a fast, pot, a fast uh, pace game. Uh, we press a lot, uh, a lot of spacing. Um, you know, threes and layups, and we uh, we want to get the ball up and down. And then, you know, from uh, Coach Pastor, you learn about, you know, screen, down screen, flare screens. You know, he came from a different style in Arizona. And, you know, everyone has their own way. But also, you know, from my standpoint, I got to adapt to the players I have and figure that out as well. I think you could tell this guy graduated magnum cum laude, a very intelligent man doing a great thing right here with the program at Victory University. Scott, always good to see you. Thanks, Greg. Before we say goodnight, a big thumbs up needs to be extended to our very own Memphis Grizzlies, who in this week's edition of ESPN the Magazine was named the best franchise in sports. The publication ranked every NBA, NFL, NHL, 
and Major League Baseball team and concluded that the Grizzlies were tops on the list. Among the criteria being considered was affordability, ownership, stadium experience, and bang for your buck. And speaking of the Grizzlies, in the coming weeks, I'll be joined here on Sports Files by CEO Jason Levian, and I'll chat with Mike Miller about his return to the organization. And that will do it for this week's show. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time.